Mark, how you doing? I'm good. Do you see me yet? Oh, I can see you, absolutely. Cool. How are you? I'm doing good, Mark. How are you doing out there? Uh, California area, right? Uh, Well, California time zone, but actually I am up in Seattle. Oh, Seattle. How is it out there? Rainy? Uh, yeah, it is raining. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cut to the chase here. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh to sit and talk with us. I mean, sure. you're doing sure. a job, and it's it's you know I, I love it. It's groovy. So, Screw let me ask you a question here, Mark. Right. A lot of people in our following they don't really know what you're about. So, mm. could you just give us a brief rundown of you know what your beliefs are? You know. Sure. Like sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. So I believe oh, I that the world is not a globe. We've been told that all our lives, that the world is this little tiny rock flying through space in five different velocities and directions, and that we are some little speck of insignificant nothing in a vast universe. Whereas I would come out and say that, no, we are actually living in a giant building, a giant structure, a terrarium, a planetarium, um, whatever you kind want to call it. Like, kind of like the, the Pauly Shore movie, The Dome. Uh, or the, Dome. the Truman Show from 1998 yeah. with Jim Carrey okay. or uh, other various movies like that. I mean, we've been talking about it in science fiction for a long time. And so the question is, if there was a structure, if this place was built, uh, you know, it, it is very, very vast... And our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960. Would they tell anyone? And how could they keep it a secret? And how long could they keep it a secret? And it looks like it only about 50, 60 years. And so I put a series in. I didn't believe it. Look, everybody hates Flat Earth. Every, I know that. And so, and I did too. And everybody starts in Flat Earth hating it to where I thought I could shut it down. The t-shirt should read, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk it. And then nine months later, I said, you know what? I'm going to go the other way with this. I can't. So you, I'm so, I'm so sorry for No, it's okay. You. Go ahead. Go ahead. But you, but you personally were not a flat earther at first. You had no. to be convinced yourself. No, I hated flat earth. Look, and I believed in just about, well, I shouldn't say I believed, but I was exposed to just about every conspiracy you could think of. And I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. I and, know, like, like and, we all do. And like everybody, um, uh, everybody knows that flat earth is terrible. It's the worst thing ever. It's the, it's the ugly duckling of them all. And I didn't even want to look at it. And when I finally did, just out of boredom, I thought, okay, and this was in 2014. I mean, literally went through my whole life, never even once crossed my mind. Tried to shoot this thing down in a weekend, and nine months later, I'm banging my head on the keyboard going, okay. Because I treat things like a court case, which is, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore, so I'm going to make a series of videos. And it's like, okay, here's my points. Boom, 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 boom. I think... It's flat. It's, flat it's, it's, yeah, I think it's flat a, yeah. The flyer yeah. clues. I think it's flat. I think it's enclosed. And internet hive mind proved me wrong. And then the opposite happened, where I had people calling me, just thinking it was interesting. I had media calling me. Wow, I was like, oh, you got to talk more about this because this is really new, even though it's not new. And then subject matter experts, which from just about every walk of life you can think of. And they all kept saying the same thing. Uh, it's like, yeah, you know what? You may be on to something. And so after the shoe, the other shoe didn't drop because I thought that somebody would shoot it down. Uh, we just kept rolling with it. And then we caught some breaks from mainstream media. And here we are. The clues just turned four years old. And uh, I mean, I was just before you called, I was setting up uh, the conferences for this year. I mean, I've got six conferences I have to be be at this year, which is, you know, and yeah, they're not small conferences. I am interested in that, Mark. I saw, um, first of all, I want to ask you about the flatties. What what are the flatties, if you can tell us? <laughs> the flat, they, 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 it's, 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 it's a terrible name, but it's but it's true. It's kind of, I mean, like anything, like the Oscars. We should have a better name than that, than the Flatties. Um, but it's the Flat Earth Video Awards. So there's so much content. Just about everybody that gets into Flat Earth, because most of the content resides on YouTube. I mean, YouTube is the biggest television network in the world. Yeah. And everybody that gets into Flat Earth gets so excited, they create brand new YouTube channels, and they create a ton of content. There was so much content that in 20... 16 we decided patricia steer and i decided to uh, make our own little awards thing for it so we came up with categories you know they based on chat room requests and then we got, came up with nominations and we were the ones that finally made the final um picks and we excluded ourselves entirely so that was our kind of our trade-off it's like okay we're not going to be in any of the nominations but we get to decide you know the finals you know it's so like we Absolutely. see we see the nominees 
and it went really well. And so uh, that was, you know, I went to the first one in Raleigh and then walked out of the second one in Denver, but that was for a completely different reason. That was because a Logan Paul showed up and I, I didn't like him and I didn't want him to be there. Oh, Logan Paul. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was a boxing match. Did you see this? The what? He, Logan Paul. He had a boxing match. Oh yeah. Well, Logan Paul, just two hour, two or three hours ago, he just released, uh, the trailer for his thing called flat earth to the edge and back. He's doing a little mini documentary cause he really, okay. uh, wants to do what Shane, uh, Shane Dawson's doing. So he released, uh, he, he shot a lot of footage down there and then he took the work and he subcontracted it off to some big editing firm. And so yeah, watch the trailer if you get a chance. I, we still don't know it's going to be released on the 20th and we still don't know if it's going to be a troll, but I'm hoping okay. for the best, but it doesn't really matter because the mainstream media is not going to talk to him and that's all I really care about. So he could be on your side. I, given that 99% of the work he does is troll work, I doubt if he's on anybody's oh. side. So <laughs> okay, I, I have I no yep. faith whatsoever that he's going to, that he's going to be nice. But you know, you know, the editors might, might spin it. It all comes down to editing, the power of editing, uh, as right. we learned in the documentary. So whatever they decide to spin it and if he approves it, hey, great, fantastic. I mean, it'll get more exposure. I'll take it. Absolutely. Now, now the documentary, are you speaking of uh, Behind the Curve by chance? Is yes, that I am. Of, Be Behind the Curve, which went through all the film festivals in 2018, was released on uh, iTunes and... Uh, yeah, just released recently. Well, yeah, it, it, recently. What, the, the reason why there was a big push recently is it came on out on Netflix about two, yeah. about two yeah. weeks Netflix. ago. It was on all the other formats, but I had forgotten that on the, all the other formats you had to pay for it. It was all a cart. Whereas Netflix, it's included, and so yeah. and then it started trending, and everybody watched it on Netflix. Oh my lord! What do you think? Of, what, do, what do you think about the documentary yourself, Mark? Did you did you like it? Did you think that they kind of put shade towards the topic? It was or... it was what I more or less expected for the most part. Uh, it was it a fair snapshot of the community in 2017? Yes, it was. Uh, did they lean towards the science side of it? Yes, they did. Uh, but not for the reason that I initially had thought. I mean, I knew the director was a science-based guy, and but he had thought we were more or less harmless. And he, let, he, he showed his hand when he did the director's commentary on the iTunes version, which was he said that everything was fine until they got to the conference and that 12-year-old kid walked up to the microphone and started asking me questions. And then... He, that's when all of them agreed. They were, they were in there doing the director's card. They all agreed, okay, we've got to make a stand now. They looked like they felt a responsibility to the children, you know, it's like, because it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. Now that is interesting that you mentioned that Mark, because more and more we've seen that a bigger amount of people believe in the flat earth. How do you feel about that? Does that sway your movement in any way? I, we actually took a poll here at barfool.com and it said that 53% of people weren't sure if the earth was flat or spherical oh sure and that that number keeps increasing the reason why in fact we've been catching a lot of grief recently um when i i did a an interview with national geographic last year at, down in california and they admitted to me the only reason they were down there is because of the u.gov survey which was a scientific research survey company out of england surveyed ten thousand americans roughly and they found out as they were getting to the younger and younger brackets, the numbers kept going up to where when they got to 18 to 24 year olds, uh, over a third of them were, were not buying the globe anymore. And, you know, they can't pull anyone younger than 18. And so they were really, really concerned about this. They didn't they thought that science wasn't taking this seriously. It's like, look, these guys aren't going away. I mean, look, I heard this at the, the, the end of 2015 where it's like, oh, no, flat earth flash in the pan. It's not going anywhere. They're dead. And it's like, you know, in 2016, we got bigger. And then 2017, we got bigger. And then last year, it started getting ridiculous to where um, uh, a quick thing. So you, uh, you, if you know anything about the internet, search results is like internet 101. Every search engine has search results equals, including YouTube. And up until the summer of last year, search results was a thing. We were climbing and climbing. We had gone from 50,000 relevant search results in 2015 to 20.9 million in 2018 and and the only reason i know that because that's when they shut off the scoreboard so somebody calls me and we and i i would noted it because i made a show about it called flat earth Pro 
catches the president of the United States because he was at Donald Trump was at 20.8 and we just passed him at 20.9. And apparently they did not like us charting that. They did not like us pointing right. at that. And so all of a yeah, sudden I got yeah, a phone. They don't, want you to, to know, they don't want people to know the truth. Exactly. And so, well, they also wanted to curb our enthusiasm. And so all of a sudden somebody calls me and they say, by the way, the scoreboard's down. I go, what do you mean? We're not getting results. They go, no, 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 no. The results are gone. Meaning every topic in the world now doesn't get tracked on YouTube um, as search results. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little echo. That's okay. I'll put in my headset. It's probably it's probably me anyway. Yeah, I, I was gonna say it looks like we're we're no worries. getting no worries. Okay, that should be better. Okay, good. I'm a little bit off. Good. Are you there? Lag, I think. Oh, we just getting a little lag. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Mark, are you there? Okay, yeah. Okay, I think we're okay. That was, I okay, think that's a little okay. bit of a lag. Okay. okay. Yeah, just a little lag. Sorry about that. No, Mark. no, it's all right. But you know, no, it, no, it's all right. it is, it is fascinating. The thought of the flat Earth. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Mark. Right now, am I a believer? Maybe not, but I am on the fence. <laughs> and I thought, ta and, and I thought talking to you, we have some, we have some interns here at Barful right. that really believe in the flat earth sure and sure we care about their opinion and you know i thought who better than the poster boy of the movement <laughs> i i'm not I i'm not a poster not, boy but i would mark mark yeah i mean yeah. i saw the behind the curve documentary yeah. and although it may have painted you guys in a poor reflection in some ways it definitely painted you as a rock star wow. and wow. you know that's fine hey you're the leader you're the john lennon you <laughs> are not ringo star buddy um and i'm so you know uh, i cool. hope you're not offended uh, by that no 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 i mean I, what i try to tell people is like look i'm there are channels that are way bigger than mine there are people that have done amazing experiments in street activism. I'm the guy that usually gets you into the door. You know, if, if Flat Earth is a university, I'm the guy that sits out front. I'm the freshman recruiter that says, oh, yeah, there's all sorts of buildings behind me with great things. Uh, so, which is good, but it, that's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. Not so much the job as you're recruiting for the truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, and, and it's like you said, there's a lot of millennials or younger people that are believing in the flat earth. It's right. the same as, say, the John F. Kennedy assassination. Right. You know, if you were to ask them in 1963, right. who killed John F. Kennedy, they would say Lee Harvey Oswald. And it would be 40 plus year olds who had lived in this world for plenty of time who couldn't understand the truth. Right. Because, I mean, that's that's my opinion there. No, 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 no I hear you. And I mean, look, like little things like the uh, the Apollo Moon program. We've been kind of tearing that apart ever since it ended. So, like, since you know, since the 18th, and that helped us because when people were leaning on NASA, there was already so much content on the Apollo program that that it's like, okay, well, we've got that taken care of. So now we can just kind of throw out NASA, which is fun. I guess, I guess, I guess my question with Apollo is, is we went to the moon in the sixties and seventies. Right. Why haven't we been right. back? Exactly. Nobody's exactly. been back. Nobody's, nobody's even, and not only have, has nobody gone there besides the Americans, if you believe the Americans, but nobody has even attempted it and nobody even talks about it. And Nixon's, Nixon's out of office. And if you, if you look it up, the only space missions that we had was nixon was in office right and what is nixon yeah a crook yeah yeah, yeah. and every president <laughs> since reagan <laughs> has talked about going back to the moon like this carrot on a stick and nobody goes back it goes back yeah exactly it's like a uh, a false a false treat right for a dog right, right. I mean, yeah everybody have, yeah it's like we're we're committed to going back here. yeah I mean, literally everybody from Reagan all the way through Trump, they've all said the same thing. And in the public's mind, it's like, oh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll go back. It's like, no, it's been a long time. Nobody's going back. 
that. Absolutely. So let me ask your opinion on this then, Mark. Right. So do you believe truly that the moon is real or is it just a... I don't think we can. I don't think we can land on it. If that's what you're asking, do I think it's a physical object? Yeah, maybe, but I don't think anyone can land on it. I mean, it's an object that's probably less than. I, I absolutely do not think we landed on it either. No. But what I'm asking you is, do you think it's a real, physical thing, or do you think that it's just something that somebody made up, put it on a hologram or a drawing or something of the sort? I could I could go either way because I've been in the software world so long I know what's possible at least with our technology and that would be not a stretch I mean look we, in, in simulations we can make things look very three dimensional uh, but can you reach them No of course not uh, and, and the, the what I tell people is okay you go to a planetarium and you see a moon there and you know planetarium has been around since the 1970s can you land on it Can you do anything No. But and they say, well, we're in a building, though, and it's like, yeah, well, that's just a matter of size, because who's saying when you walk out of one building, you're just not in a much bigger building. Your building. That's fascinating. Hmm. Fascinating. Now let me ask you a question, Mark. Sure. Um, what made you decide in your head right away that the Earth was flat? Because you, how long have you been doing this? About three years, three, four, four years, five, four years now. Four years. Yeah. Four years. So, you, so four years ago, mm -hmm. you were, you know, you're a grown adult, mm -hmm. and you came, you know, somebody came to you with this theory and right. said, the earth is flat. Right. And you'll never think the same again. What made you believe it? Um, there was no um, one thing. No. There was a lot of little things, but the but because I was always about connecting the dots. And since I've watched a lot of movies and read a lot of things, I was a big believer in plot holes. And as I was going through the flat earth narrative, meaning, okay, if the world was flat and you were going to hide it, what would you do? I realized that just about everything the government did was flawless in that regard. And that they took big strokes back in the 1960s, which threw me. And the one that the one that caught my eye more than most was Antarctica, and by that the Antarctic Treaty. Uh, the the Admiral Byrd footage really really spoke to me when he was on that television show in the 1950s. He came on a television show and he said, "Look, this place is absolutely made out of money. Uh, there's coal for the entire world. There's oil. There's uranium. There's minerals." And then. Then, and he said, in fact, there may be even a conflict where countries are going to fight over this. And then he all of a sudden changed his mind and everybody got off the ice and they put in the Antarctic Treaty in place, which says not only is any no country allowed to go down there and set up shop from a corporation standpoint, but they're not even allowed to talk about it. And that went against everything that we are as a civilization. Uh, you know, our civilization is based off greed and as, as, as sad as it is, it's based off greed and money and power. And men will do anything to get men these resources. And yet resources. they Absolutely. will not go down they, there. They're not allowed to talk about it. Uh, what uh, what conspiracy uh, is bigger uh, than money? There's only a couple that I can think of. And Flat Earth just, just reached out at me. It's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to put it out there. And it did resonate with a lot of people. And that footage really, really helped because Admiral Byrd's on there. He's on television saying, well, yeah, Antarctica, we're going to be down there for the next hundred years. And then they locked it down for all time. I mean, honestly, Mark, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, your flat earth clues, they're a YouTube sensation. And well. I'm sure that, you know, plenty of people are on your side. And I love it. I love it, Mark. Well, um, like I said, I personally am still on the fence. That's okay. That's why I wanted to talk to you today. That's why I wanted to talk to you today because, you know, it's it's great to hear other other standpoints. Um now let me ask you a question. Right. You recently disregarded Joe Rogan. Right. How do you feel about Joe Rogan? What What do you have to say about Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan is Rogan. unusual in that unusual. he in is that the he, he, only conspiracy guy I've ever heard of, heard which doesn't of. believe in conspiracies anymore. Conspiracies anymore. And by the way, you might want to turn by down way, your your speakers just a hair. 
just on your there. side because can, well, I'm, well I'm, no, I'm catching some feedback on my side but that's okay we'll we'll live so so joe rogan's the only conspiracy guy that doesn't believe in conspiracies anymore it, it's never happened i know in the history of conspiracies which all of a sudden he you know he's into everything right he attacks nasa he attacks this and then he goes dark for a while nobody hears from him and he comes back and he's got a one-year television deal with the with the sci-fi network called joe rogan questions everything and then the very first episode, he apologizes for anything he ever said bad about NASA. I mean, this is one of the most blatant things I've ever seen in my life. It's like, okay, okay, it's obvious that you were compromised somehow. We don't know if it was, you know, with the carrot or the stick or both. Uh, but ever since then, he's had one of the biggest podcasts in the world. And he slams on conspiracies on a regular basis. He doesn't believe in any conspiracies anymore. Let, to, just pick one. He doesn't. He, he All he does is talk about um, marijuana and sports people. That's all he does anymore. So Joe Rogan, hey, great, good, good for him that he found a niche, but I think it was a too high a price. I like Joe Rogan, and you know I've never heard that aspect of talking about him. You know I I love the UFC, I love fighting Conor McGregor. Actually, a matter of fact, Mark, I don't know if you ever had it or not, but proper twelve whiskey <laughs> from Conor McGregor. It's a great whiskey. That's awesome. We had we had a couple drinks tonight, and uh, you know Joe Rogan. I, I have seen some videos from his earlier days where he's talking about conspiracy and he's very about them. Right. And then now he does kind of just seem to yeah. steer away from it. He's also, but, he, but he's smart it. enough to bring us up for ratings. I have lost count on how many different shows he has brought up Flat Earth because Flat Earth is such a, a cool, trendy topic. Well, it's, been, it's, it's, been, it's been at least 11 or 12 that I've seen. At least. Yeah. At least. Yeah. And, every, and anytime Eddie Bravo's on with him, he can't help but, but bait Eddie into talking about it so mark i gotta tell you man it's uh it, it really is great talking to you mm -hmm. and i just i have a couple more questions for you sure um the flat earth is real in your mind absolutely and absolutely. all the followers mind so what if tomorrow i were to bring you proof that said the earth is not flat what would you say to that i quit I'd quit Flat Earth and I'd go back to some sort of quiet, normal life. And I'd be happy because everybody that goes into Flat Earth hates it. And I honestly didn't think... Seriously, if you would have come to me five years ago and said, oh yeah, by the way, you're going to be doing conferences and public speaking and doing interviews about Flat Earth, I would have said, get the hell out of here. You're, you're insane. And so basically what you're saying to me, Mark, is when you were a kid, you didn't dream... Of being the poster child for flat earth. <laughs> I kind of used came to one of my hobbies because I used to collect a lot of things. I used to actually collect antique globes. That's how indoctrinated I was. And when I got into this, I was like, "Oh, great! Now I have to get rid of these things." Uh, no, no. I mean, I in fact, that's what we look for on a regular basis. Flat earthers will go out and look for things that can prove the globe if we can, and we never find it. That's how everybody gets into it. Again, the this T-shirt reads, "I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth." Nobody likes flat earth. It's terrible. I mean, I, I was so stubborn it, it took me nine months, and then finally I just gave up. And that's what most people do. They try to lean on on globe evidence, and then they finally get frustrated, give up, and said, "Fine, I'm I'm flat earth." Most the average time t turnaround time is about two weeks. Okay. So you're saying, basically what you're saying, Mark, is that if people actually look up the information, then they will be convinced. But uh, eventually you're going to run out. You, well, The first thing anyone does is they're going to lean on one of the space programs. They're going to lean on NASA. And that goes nowhere fast because they're just, they're, the NASA images and all their production values have not aged well. Apollo has aged terribly. I could send you a single image and point out at least 10 different things wrong with it. Um, I mean, shadows in it, they're all wrong. The shadows. The shadows are wrong. I mean, no blast crater. Um, no feats of strength. The VHF transmitter is absolutely underpowered. Uh, the space suit cannot work as advertised. It goes on. Not to mention the entire capsule, when you look at it on, on an HD monitor, it looks like it was made by a homeless person. Uh, it was just yeah, duct tape, duct tape over curtain there. Curtain rods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. I mean, 
I, I'm trying to figure out NASA gets a lot of money and back in the day it's like that's the best you could come up with seriously that's I mean honestly they probably didn't understand that eventually there was going to be HD monitors and high speed internet and social networking yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they couldn't have known back then no they couldn't have known it was going to get that good to where people would just swap which is why I also don't think this system was going to be a secret that was going to be kept forever uh, you know eventually it's kind of like um, how long how, how long can you keep this a secret when the population general population population technology gets better and better and better it's kind of like hiding a, a pack of cigarettes from your roommate you can move it around here and there but eventually they'll find it sorry go ahead all people know is the information that they're given and if the government feeds you information down your throat then do you really know the truth yeah yeah that's the question um i guess what i want to ask you mark is there's different fractions of the flat earth is what I'm told. Uh, some people believe it's a dome mm -hmm. above the earth. Right. Some people believe that it is ice walls that are containing the oceans. What do you think, Mark? I believe uh, that, and, and by the way, the ice walls is a common misconception. A lot of people think that, oh, you're saying that the Antarctic coastline is the edge of the earth. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm saying that the Antarctic coastline is the beginning of the end, meaning Admiral Byrd traveled in probably several thousand miles. You remember, he, he used his own planes for 30 years, probably several thousand miles in, you know, before you run into whatever barrier it is. As far as what's the barrier made out of, take your pick, uh, high frequency, force field, heavy metal, heavy, some sort of heavy element, heavy water, uh, don't know. Whatever it is, though, it can't be penetrated because the United States and Soviet Union tried with megaton weapons for four years and gave up. This is very interesting, Mark. So, do you believe that there is a higher power controlling us or controlling the dome? Or, you know, is it kind of like the Truman Effect where we are just entertainment to somebody else? Or is it just like a biodome where you see what happens when you put a group of people into an environment could could be either it absolutely could be in fact i i believe that higher civilizations and civilizations of advanced technology probably and i'm stealing the line out of contact which is uh they they have efficient efficiency functioning on multiple levels so who made it so you have only have one of two choices either an advanced civilization or the divine and really you're just splitting really hairs at that point because one one man's advanced technology is another man's deity deity uh, completely understandable now let me ask you a question um there has been talk that you are actually a secret fbi agent are you joe lane joe lane are you Joe Lane, the FBI agent? Is Joe Lane an FBI agent? I, I've been I've been accused of being a Joe Real, a, a producer out of San Diego, California. Who's Joe Lane? Yeah. So, do you work for Warner Brothers? <laughs> no. That's what I'm wondering. No, no, no. I have been not. accused of so, so, so many things. So you're just be. I, I do have some quotes here, but I just want to make sure that you're not just some Warner Brothers guy that planted himself in the flat earth just right. to make a movie How, does that sound like you mark uh no and by the way that i did not actually make the movie that movie was made by a company called delta v productions out of los angeles no 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 i know mark no. but basically what i'm what i'm looking here at in my notes right. is that a lot of people think that you know you're kind of just a agent right Planted in the flat earth community right. to conceal the truth from the states. Yeah. Uh, if I was, I would be the worst was, secret I agent the ever secret because ever. four years <laughs> later and I haven't made my move yet. Because eventually, here's what happens. If you're going to plant, look, if you're going to do some sort of counterintelligence thing, eventually that person is going to have to go off the rails. He's going to have to go off road. So everything's going straight, going straight, and then all of a sudden veering off and doing whatever he's going to do. It's kind of like when the bridge goes out on the train track. Yep. 
just straight into yeah. the ocean. Yeah, and I have never, I, never wavered. Yeah. I've done, I don't know, hundreds of interviews. I can't tell you how many videos at this point. Uh, 1,500, 1,600 videos. Always say the same thing. The, you know, the world is flat. Trying to recruit more people. If, if what if i'm if i'm in it to derail it it's like okay tell me when it's, when i'm gonna do it when when i'm gonna make my my big move because because you are promoting it so heavily right. that why would an agent promote something so heavily oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean there's there's all sorts of ways to derail something and i am doing the exact opposite of it in fact i'm i'm one of the first people to say i don't think there are any co-intel agents in flat earth and i've met a lot of people because i haven't seen anyone go off the rails everybody's been really really straightforward and so and i'll even take it a step further which is google and the search engines you know google one of the biggest corporations in the world and youtube part of that has done nothing but help us for the last three years only recently have they said oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna cut back recommending them and honestly i would have said that was a pretty good idea because we were getting recommended too much in some cases people were typing in anything and flat earth was getting recommended to them. jfk flat earth uh 9 11 flat earth potato salad flat earth it's like what tractor maintenance flat earth right see see and that's the thing is you don't want to be mixed in with all the nuts and you know well, everything out there you know i mean part of that's going to come anyway I'm sure, I'm sure that i'm sure that the flat earth community gets a lot of ridicule oh yeah you tons, know, tons. A lot of, yeah and uh you know it's the thing is is you have to have a platform to tell society what you believe in right you know yep so if you don't have that platform mark then yeah it's over it's yeah. it's propaganda i agree it's propaganda and um you know i i i do believe in the work that you're doing thanks it's uh it's good. like i said am i a complete follower of the flat earth no <laughs> but, you but, but you don't have to be either look i can't i can't convince somebody during an interview or a podcast or or whatever all i can do is plant the seed and say look it may you may want in fact i what i usually tell people is they don't believe a word i'm saying uh you know don't take anything i'm i'm saying is absolute face value do your own research figure it out uh if, discover for yourself what you think and that's what usually gets people it's like i they people run off and say well i can totally prove it's a globe and then they run off and two weeks later they come back and they say oh my god oh my god so so we do have some fan questions here mark yeah uh, someone wants to know how, what scientifically proves to you mm -hmm. that the earth is flat? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing scientifically proves to me the earth is flat. What I mean by that is, can I prove the flat earth to you right now without, a sh without any doubt? Uh, no. Um, if I could, I'd be on the cover of Time magazine. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model. Uh, I'll give you my quick five points, though. Uh, there was a Georgetown physicist that wanted to debate me through a German television team. And they said, give me five questions, five, five scientific statements that you, he can rebut. And I said, okay, long distance photography. That's the first one. Uh, boats going over the horizon. We all know they go over the horizon. But with... HD cameras with optical zoom or digital zoom, you can zoom into these boats and they should be behind the curve. Eventually, those boats should be on the other side of the hill. You should not be able to bring them back and we can always bring them back. In fact, the only reason we can't see immense distances is because of the, thi thi I'm sorry, the thickness of the atmosphere. Uh, number two would be gravity versus the vacuum of space which is gravity supposedly holds our atmosphere now, except that the vacuum of space is so strong, it should rip off the atmosphere entirely. The second law of thermodynamics says that pressure needs a container, and we don't see that. Third would be the eclipse shadow, which is uh, the eclipse for so the moon. 
is so in front of the sun. It generates the moon is two thousand miles yeah. wide. It generates a seventy mile wide yeah. shadow. It's called the blackout zone. And yet, when the Earth is in front of the sun, it should generate a two hundred fifty mile wide blackout zone on the moon. We never ever see it. Why not? We only just see a blood moon. Fourth is the moon temperature, which is which is really creepy. Which is the moon actually generates a cooling light. Uh, this, as we know, when you're um, in the sun, it's ninety degrees in the sun, eighty degrees in the shade. But in the moon, it's the exact opposite. 50 exactly. degrees in the moonlight, 60 degrees Light, in the moon shade. It's warmer the in the moon shade, up to 13 degrees. And you're saying, okay, does that prove a flat Earth? No, it doesn't, but it destroys the model, the relationship between the sun and the moon. The moon, if it's reflecting the sun's light, should not generate what's known as a cool laser, which we can replicate in laboratories. Last but not least would be the Van Allen radiation belt trap question, which always wins, always. Which is, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? If yes, then yeah. how did the Apollo yeah. astronauts make round trips through it with aluminum and plastic no. shielding? And uh, the deadly ra radiation belts announced in 1959. Nobody died. Nobody got cancer. Nobody got radiation poisoning. There's five of them still walking around today. You know, you know, there's actually a NASA astronaut. I forget what his name is. It was on Apollo. Uh, what was it? Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thirteen, I believe it was. Thirteen, maybe. He died. Well, yeah, they Very die. They die right? of natural. Yeah. He died just recently. No, no, no. He died in the space. Show. I... No, 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 no. Well, the o the only gonna, astronauts that have ever died. No, it's okay. The only uh, trust me, I know this stuff. The only astronauts that have ever died in space would be the Challenger astronaut. No, 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 no. He didn't die in space. He died. They were launching, and they died. Oh, Gus Grissom in Apollo One. Sure. Yeah, Apollo 1, yeah. Yeah, Apollo okay. 1, well, yeah. if you believe that, Apollo 1 blew up supposedly on the on the pad, caught fire. But here's the thing, Gus Grissom was the only astronaut to ever say that the program was never going to work and the technology was, wasn't there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was a big critic of it. Yeah. So a lot of people think, a lot of people think that NASA actually blew up the spaceship Oh, it was it was prob it was probably worse than that. What if you were going to run a fake space program? The last thing you would ever do is put any astronaut in any capsule and put them on a pile of liquid explosives. What you would do is you would <coughs> excuse me, you would launch the rocket, have the have the astronaut sitting off somewhere in an air force base, and then put them in a capsule, put them in a plane, drop them from a parachute into the water, and then pick them up. You'd never ever put them on a freaking rocket. Right, I agree. So, so you have some great. So, just to be sure, right? You are not an FBI agent. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking. No. I'm, I'm sorry. I know. It's, I know it's comical, but I. No, 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 no. I know. I am. I am not. No, it's a good question to ask. I am not any part of any law enforcement agency, uh, and I would love for somebody to prove that I am. In fact, I get more. I get more actually accusations of being a, a Hollywood guy. Than, uh, than a law enforcement guy. Yeah, so so the Hollywood guy, the law enforcement, they, they, they kind of run hand in hand. Right. So you're not with Warner Brothers. Right? right? Nope. 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 And you're not with the FBI. <laughs> nope, not with the FBI. I'm not part of the gay mafia. I am not a large can Jewish you, woman. Can I ask you a question? What? Are you James Bond? Because you're almost... I... You're... Considered in so many different fractions here of of the world that you could be FBI, you could be movie, you could be flat earth. Yeah, I'd have to be way better looking to be James Bond. James Bond is usually a certain good, you know, a, a statuesque, handsome guy. I am not that guy. I used to be cuter, but no, I, I photograph horribly. I'm better live than I am on camera. That's for sure. No, I will say this. In the movie right. Behind the Curve, right. you were kind of portrayed as the flat earth Jesus almost. <laughs> That's the I first time I've that. heard that one. That's good. Flat Earth Jesus. How do you feel with that title? Flat Earth Jesus. Wow, that's a new one. Um, I think I'd be a little worried about that because at least half of the flat earth community are strong Christians. And I think they would probably have some they would have some issues with that particular title. So I will use that one in sparingly. 
Now, now, just just to be sure here, Mark, because I totally forgot to ask you at the beginning of the interview. Yeah. We are going to use your likeness in a video and maybe yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. book. Uh, officially, officially, you can use my likeness for whatever you want. Uh, I haven't copyrighted anything. Um, I don't even have MarkSargent.com copyrighted. That was done by a completely different guy. Uh, and so, yeah, use use my stuff for whatever. In fact, even all my videos are Creative Commons license. If I can get away with it, if I'm not using copyrighted music, so feel free. I definitely appreciate it, Mark. Oh no, 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 no worries. In fact, most of the traction I got on YouTube was because people mirrored my videos. There are channels out there, um, like. Uh, that aren't any that use my clues uh one in fact they turned them into a video series one was called they are hiding god with the greatest lie ever uh with the biggest lie ever and then under the dome full documentary i think that's at what 4.5 4.6 million and i know i don't even know these guys they just they just took them and hey great fantastic make make thousands of dollars on youtube good for you now let me ask you a question mark mm -hmm. so if you believe that we are under you know almost like a snow globe right in a way right do you believe there's a higher power do you believe it's aliens do you believe it's i would know, like what, to what, what do you believe built the snow globe it's definitely a higher power but the question is did god build it or did god subcontract out the work uh because i'd like to think with a place like this it was so so, so, so do you believe in aliens not like normal people believe in aliens Meaning, do I think that aliens are from Jupiter and Venus and Mars? No. No, I don't. I would think they're more interdimensional. And by that, I mean what we think are aliens are probably just older versions of us. Meaning, we weren't the first people to rent this apartment. Older, more sophisticated version, more Yeah, why not? I mean, who? who they, look, we are not... We know there's remnants of old civilizations. The sunken cities off of Japan. The sunken cities off of India. Uh, the Bosnian pyramids, Biz, Bimini Road, the real pyramids. Who was here before us? What version are we? Uh, we're not. We're definitely not the the first version. So the question is, who how, who were the versions, and were there survivors of those versions? I think there were. Yeah, you know, Mark, I definitely agree with you. I believe there's aliens, and I believe that the aliens definitely have better technology than us. Well, how do you feel about? Area 51. Do you believe it's real? Oh, of course it's real. It's course. No, it's not. Okay, first off, it's not even a question of if it's real. Um, there's been mainstream television shows that have gone in with HD cameras and shot it from mountain peaks. It's massive. Everybody knows it's out there. Categorically, it doesn't exist. But then again, so do a lot of military programs. You know, there's all sorts of bases we don't know about. Area 51 is the most famous. Do they reverse technology there? Sure. Uh, one of my favorite stories here, if, if you don't mind, there, one of my favorite stories about Area 51 was when it was built uh, and Eisenhower, President Eisenhower back in the day when he became president, when he wasn't a five-star general anymore, he found out that it was being completed and he wanted a tour. So he calls him up and he says, hey, I would like to come out and see it. And they said, sorry, you don't have clearance. And he and it, which the president of the United States wouldn't necessarily. He is not exactly high up on the food chain. And he says, well, let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to call my friends that I still know in the first army because I know all these generals because they all served under me in World War II. And we're going to come out to Area 51 and we're going to tour it. So they can let me in. And, and the story was, yeah, they said, okay, fine, you can come out here. So, yeah. Area 51, absolutely real. It's a real thing. Now, what do, you know, are there actually aliens there or beings from another world? Yeah, maybe. But I think there's better bases than that we've never even heard of. There you go. Well, I've seen some things on Area 51 where there's not so much living beings, but they do have the carcasses sure. of some aliens. Why not? And, you know, I think, what I think, Mark, is, is that if aliens are real, right. and the U.S. government knows it, right. then they will have flat earth documentation at Area 51. Ooh. Should we subpoena them? That's good. Well, yeah, I don't think you're going to probably get much of Area 51. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you're going to be, you're not going to get a lot of, a lot of traction there. But that's okay. I mean, yeah, they, they'd have documents there, but I think there's other documents in other places. 
I mean, yeah, it's super compartmentalized, but there's definitely people that know. I don't think there's millions of people that know, but I think there's thousands. So let me ask you a question, Mark. Do you believe in the Illuminati? Is the Illuminati somehow behind this spherical Earth conspiracy? You could ask any conspiracy person what their top 20 secret societies are in order of importance and nobody's going to give you the same answer meaning is it the illuminati is it the bilderbergs is it the rothschilds is it the masons is it the trilateral commission and so on is the vatican and so on or jewish cabal and so on and so on and so on is the illuminati the top dog in this i don't know um one of the first well the first rule of power don't forget is this stay hidden and that is the, the well, 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 Mark, hmm? it's uh, you you just said that stay hidden. It reminded me of a quote from the Usual Suspects. You might understand it. Hmm. The greatest trick the ever the devil, the devil ever pulled, pulled was convincing devil. people he didn't exist. Absolutely. Okay. the The bigger line the, of the stay the hidden line, thing is, and hidden. again, this is the first rule of power: is never put yourself power in a position to be overthrown. Meaning it is the curse and the blessing of being the ultra powerful, which is if you're ultra powerful, you can't let the public know who you are, because if they find out, you will be hunted down eventually. And but at the same time, you can also be the puppet master. But it, you've got to be, you know, nobody knows who the puppet master is. Right. Yeah, I, I understand completely. Um Mark, I got to tell you, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. I I, oh, you. I love hearing a new theory. And uh, I just want to ask you a couple questions, Mark. That's okay. If sure. you have time. Sure, sure, I'll get time. Sure, sure, I'll get time. Okay. First of all, what do you think about Rob Skiba? <laughs> That's an odd one. I like I like Rob Skiba. Uh, Rob Skiba is one of the biggest member flat Earth members in the Christian side of things. I converted him personally. He um, he created a website called TestingTheGlobe.com, which goes over the entire Bible, the Christian Bible, uh, from chapter and verse uh, as a, as it applies to the flat Earth community. And he's done some amazing stuff. He's done stuff. So. So. so I have an article here that says Rob Skiba is a fake <laughs> and he's only doing flat earth to make money. How do you feel about that? Uh, please. I have met Rob Skiba several times. Several he is times. about a straight shooter. In fact, I trust him more than I trust myself. That's that's how much faith I have in Rob Skiba. He is a great, great guy and he is loved in the flat earth community. I don't know who says that. Probably his competitors. Probably. Hey, it could be it could be sphere, spherical. Could be sphere. <laughs> it could be spherical. Could be globalist. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. It's a flat earthers and earthers, flat earthers and spherical. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. But I like Rob. Rob's good. Rob's a good guy. Okay. So how do you feel about? You know, we saw. We all saw. On behind the curve, the seismic test that Globebusters did. Right. How do you feel about that? I don't. I the, the, what I what I like to tell people is the power of editing. I like to tell the power of editing. Meaning, Globebusters and Jaren ran through their tests. Jaren, but get a member. By the time the director got to the, are we still connected? By the way, because it's breaking up just a little bit. I think we're okay. So by the time that we got to the end of that thing, the director hated Flat Earth. He didn't hate us, but he hated Flat Earth as a concept. To the point where he even uh, took a shot with the green button with me. Meaning, if you saw that little scene where I was at the Kennedy Space Center with Patricia Steer, and they lingered, and they just did it by accident, which was they, they zoomed in on the green button, but they completely chopped out the part where I was smacking on the green button trying to work it. And because they left that part out, it was a great little narrative where they said, oh, Mark missed the obvious green button, which means he misses obvious things, which means it has to be a globe. Yeah. And 
and and the director asked me if he could leave it in, and I said, sure, why not? You want to take your shot? Sure. That's fine. Let's take your shot. Fine. So you don't believe that that test nope. had any... No, nope, I don't. Even, look, of... it, uh, it, the 15 degrees, most people don't even understand how the test is supposed to work anyway, yeah, no, but I'll explain it real fast, anyway. which is if you have a gyro, is... Is the sky moving at 15 degrees or are we moving at 15 degrees? Because if you look at any time lapse of the sky, it looks like it's, it's moving 15 degrees. So did the gyro pick up the movement of the sky or did it pick up the movement of the ground? From our standpoint, it's always going to be the sky. So it did pick up the 15 degrees. Sure. From what I understand, I mean, I wasn't there, but I, almost, what I guessed. Almost a false positive. I guess. I don't know. I mean, it, look, we've done the gyro tests. I don't care about as much because the average person does not know how a gyro works. Of course, the average person doesn't even know what the curvature of the earth is. So whatever. I mean, what I, I kind of put it in the same ballpark as the Foucault's pendulum, which is that giant pendulum you see at like history museums, which is like get a, get a scientist to explain in 60 seconds how that works and then get a flat earthers to try to explain at the same time. And the average person in the middle, they're not going to understand either of them. So, whatever. So, do you think that anytime soon, you guys might be able to prove that the Earth is flat? Boy, it'd be nice. Uh, the only proof that I would... You're ready for it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the, the, the people have asked me all the time. It's like, what would you do right now to prove the Earth was flat? And I said, okay, if you want to do something obvious, get somebody, it's going to have to be an existing space program, get a 4K camera, put it on the capsule, a, a, you know, a rocket that's going to go leave Earth orbit, fire it up, do not hit the pause button, do not hit any edit buttons, and let that sucker fly, and the Earth should curve or not, you know, beneath you, and we should be able to analyze the footage. It's never happened in the history of space travel, which is a little weird. Um, the other thing which I propose to people, which is a lot cheaper, and you could do it on the ground, is give me a spacesuit. And put me in a vacuum chamber and throw the switch and tell me how I don't die. Because a spacesuit should not work the way that is advertised. There is no way that a spacesuit can stop the vacuum force. All right, all right. So how do you feel about Brian Hickey? Who's Brian Hickey? From the Herald. From the Herald. Is he the guy from... They, they wrote right here... That Mark Sargent is flat out wrong or semi famous about being flat out wrong about flat earth. Oh, uh, what article was that? I know that uh, name. Is this is Brian is Brian Hitch? Oh, the Everett Herald? Oh, the Everett Herald? From the Herald, yep. Uh that's fine. I mean uh, look, I've heard worse than that. <laughs> Are you kidding? What's that line from Ghostbusters? I don't have to take that from you. I got people lined up to abuse me. I, I mean seriously, people have written people have written so many horrible things about me that if he wants to say Oh, that was from the movie, wasn't it? The um if yeah, people can people will say what they want, but again, what I try to tell everyone is if you don't laugh at if you don't make fun of Flat Earth in the first twenty minutes you hear it, then there's probably something wrong with you. Uh, everybody goes against flat earth first. It's the normal reaction. I get it. And which is why I can't yell at them. It's like, look, somebody's on the other side of the table and they say, you're insane. I say, look, it's fine. I used to be you. I'm not anymore. So, so basically what you're saying, Mark, is that you've been converted yeah. from the normal thinking to flat earth. Yep. Indeed, I have. I have been converted, but I did it. I did it. Be Cheers to that. There you go. I did it because I tried to kill it. Everybody tries to kill flat Earth. I thought it was the stupidest, most ridiculous idea ever. You know, you know I'm going to be honest with you, Mark. I was looking up over the past week or so since I contacted you. Right. Or, well, not since I contacted you, but since Richard, he's an intern here. Richard loves you, man. He loves you. <laughs> Hi, Richard, if he's listening. Big shots Richard. How was that? Is Richard listening? Yeah, he's absolutely in the other room watching. Cool. On the TV. Thank you. Thank he you. He loves it. Thank you to he Richard. He loves you, Mark. Richard. And, we, you know, like I said, we don't necessarily believe it, but we took Richard's word 
And we said, all right, Richard, we're going to run with this. We're going to run with this flat earth. Right. And we're going to interview Mark Sargent if he if he's really ready for it. Sure. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you stepping in. Yeah. But I don't believe it, Mark. That's okay. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't expect you and, to. I don't expect you to. And, and hey, listen, I'm not doing a biased interview by any means. I'm trying to interview as straight as I can. Sure. And I appreciate all your your factual evidence. I'm not going to lie to you, Mark. You got me on the fence, man. I don't know what's real. <laughs> is it spherical or is it flat? Right. Right. I mean, it's it's not exactly the the biggest stretch in the world when it comes to ideas. I know people for a lot of people it's too big. But think of it this way. Even our best and brightest, even the best minds in the world didn't know for sure until about 1960 because they just didn't have the technology to check it out. Until you have pressurized airplanes, you know, pressurized cabins, you don't know. You could have been the king of France in 1500 that, and that knew about this. You can't do anything about it. So when they found out, it was like, and they didn't even have to try very hard. It's like, you know what? Let's just keep it a secret. It's only time and money. We'll figure out what to do with the public down the road. Easy enough. Easy enough. I mean, hey, Mark, let me be honest with you, man. There's a lot of things that the government holds from the public. Absolutely. So why would the flat earth be any different? Abs yeah, the, there's an old, there's an old saying by one of our presidents, FDR, and he said, only tell the public as much truth as they can handle. I love, I love, I love FDR. Yeah. Like Don Orr. I love him. Good. I love him. Now... Let me ask you one question. Right. What's the difference? If the Earth is flat, if the Earth is spherical, what is the it difference? It doesn't make any difference until you start believing it. It's kind of like telling somebody they're adopted. And no offense if, if you're adopted. But if I told you that, you'd be like, whatever. And in fact, you might even say, I don't even care if I was adopted. But the second you start believing it, all of a sudden, the reason why it's it's such a big deal is because it would change everything around you. Now, you might come back and say, well, I still got to go to work in the morning and my wife hates me and my kids don't listen to me. And who cares, right? If the world's round or flat. I'm going, do you have a wife and kids, Mark? I do not. I've, I have, um, I've never even been engaged. And it's just a, a matter of fate, I suppose. The world has been... Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you believe in true love? Yes, I do believe in true love. I, I, in fact, I, I, I search for it every chance I get. And you're still looking for it. I, do, I am. Uh, why are you single? Why are you single? Am I? Yeah. <laughs> I love men. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, no, I am. I, yeah, I, I do look for true love. I really, really do. And and I think I've I've had a few moments in my life, but for whatever reason, I'm destined to do something else. Something else. Mark. Yes. I gotta tell you, man, this has been one probably the greatest interview I've had so far. No, oh, I don't know. And I love your backdrop. Oh yeah, Google flat Earth clues. <laughs> that was an I idea thrown picture. at me by one of the people. It's like you got to put something back there that lets people know what to look up. It's like okay. It's like okay. All right. So, if you have a closing statement, can you just to just compound? That the earth is flat. Right. Let me hear it right now. Okay. <sighs> Don't. Okay. Sorry. Okay. There is an old saying, and that is, that is we believe the world that is presented to us. We do. We, you know, and that is, it, don't take everything you hear at face value. Trust everyone, but count your change. Count your change. So, you know, do, again, don't, all I'm trying to do here is put the idea in your head. You, meaning the listeners, you have to go out and figure it for yourself. So go out. All you have to do is Google Flat Earth Clues, Google Flat Earth. Just do a little poking around and see if you can prove the globe to yourself. Because up until now, I guarantee you just assumed it was real. And tell me what happens. Even if you, even if you give Flat Earth two minutes. 
where where do you end up at the end of that? And can you, you know, because it, once it gets in your head, it's like a marble in a paint can. You cannot get rid of it. And two weeks later, if you're open-minded at all, your life will change forever. Change forever. So, Mark, yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, but what I really have to ask you is, is in Beyond the Curve, yes. they did a couple of experiments. Yes. They didn't go too well. Again. How do you guys feel about yeah. that? And are you going to refute that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the, the guys that did the experiments, Bob from Globusters and Jaron, I mean, they're, they're very... They were stoned. The what? They were stoned? No, no, they weren't stoned. No, they were very upset <laughs> about how it was portrayed. Jaron wanted the unedited footage. The director wouldn't give it to him. And Bob said that he was taken out of context. And I absolutely support Bob and Jaron completely. Uh, and... We have done so many experiments during that set, during that time, and then after that time that were never never aired. So, what can I tell you? The director hates Flat Earth. It's, it was not made by a Flat Earth group. If, we, if a Flat Earth so makes a movie, it'll be completely you different. Guys, so you guys are blaming the director. Absolutely. For your experience failing. No, 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 no. <laughs> Meaning, the presentation of the experiments was skewed by the director. And by that, here, let me, let me. Okay, so th they weren't showing all the evidence. Nope, nope. Remember, you had to condense seven months worth of footage into a hundred minutes. And you didn't like Flat Earth. You were not going to paint us in a good light. They didn't have to end that movie that second the way they did. And uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I saw the ending, and that that ending was not fair to you guys. Well, again, it was their movie; they can they can end it any way they want, uh, but they didn't have to take that sort of shot, and that's fine. I mean, the director, in, in the end, it helped us because we had so much exposure from that movie, and it also made the audience feel safe. You know, everything from. So in the end, you guys support. Oh, I support. I support the movie because in it, ju the ends justified the means. I mean, my my email load doubled literally within a week, and I was already getting a ton of emails. Uh, we picked up two more conferences just last week because of this thing. Uh, we've gotten all sorts of uh, great press over it. There's an old the, the old saying is that um, even bad press is free, and. And that worked for us, so I don't mind. You know, yeah, Jaron and Bob will take their shots on it, but in the end, you know, we did good. Any, any press is good press, Mark. Yeah. That's what they say. That's what they say. And you know, I gotta tell you guys, I love the way that you are able to just go out there and do what you do, man. I mean, I love it. Thanks. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. It's appreciated. I mean, so, I mean, do what I can. Me and Barfool.com, like I said, man, not all of us are supporters, but we do believe in your cause, man. I mean, if you want to find the truth, then you are truly going to do it. Thank you. As long as you keep at it. Thank you. Hey, hey, by the way, is that Johnny Cash on the wall behind you? It is Johnny Cash. Do you like it? Uh, I do like it. I do like it. I was I was just noticing that. I was like, wait, that's Johnny that's Cash. Johnny Cash. That's that's <laughs> that's that's painted by a good friend of mine. Oh, nice. He's actually running for senator next year. Really? Good for him. Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna bring flat Earth to the Senate race. <laughs> well, you might get lucky. I mean, it's there's a quite a ready? quite a few people looking at it. I mean, there's celebrities that you know are out of the closet, and some that are in the closet. So, uh, speaking of that, yeah. I, Kyrie Irving, right, a famous Celtics basketball player, right. is a flat earther. How do you feel about that? Oh, are you kidding? How do you feel about getting the celebrities on your end to where? You know, it, it was it was great uh, having Kyrie come in in 2017. He basically amplified 2017 for us. I mean, who would have known that he would have come out as a yeah Kyrie? He became a flat earther on his as he was flying to the All Star game before media day. 
And yeah. when he landed, they just came at him. And it was great because he had just he already had his championship ring. He had LeBron as a best friend. And LeBron is like, whatever he's into, great, fantastic. And he was it was fantastic. The sports world just lit up and they hammered him. <laughs> but he's he stayed he stayed tough. I like it. Hey. Let me tell you something. It's like they say, the first one through the wall, it's not going to be easy. No, no. The no. first one through the wall, it's not going to be true. easy. That's true. Nobody wants to be the first so, first person on the dance floor at the wedding. You know, you usually have to wait for some. And that might be you, Mark. That might be you. Are you bruised up from going through the wall? No. Because actually we have, uh, we have, we have some, we have a, uh, let me find it here. We have a guy that says that you're an FBI agent. <laughs> the FBI agent again? Is it Matt Powell. Oh, my God. Not Matt. Oh, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Matt. Matt. How do you feel about that, man? Matt, Matt Boylan, I, I was actually pleased that ma they made him the villain in the movie uh, because he was a great choice. I mean, he hates everybody. He's like he's like Mikey from the freaking uh, uh, commercial, that serial commercial from years ago. He hates everything. He does, but he does say that he is the founder of Flat Earth. Right, right, he does. And he, look, I I will be fair. He did bring it up before just about anybody else, but he brought it up really one dimensionally, meaning it was like photo or painting, photo or painting. It's like look, I, if you say it a hundred times to somebody and they don't get it the first ten, they're not going to get it the rest of the time. So. He only had one approach, and so people just didn't listen to him. I mean, a few people listened to him, but it took we we had to create a be, a bigger spectrum before it got it, it took off. It took off. So you're not an FBI agent <laughs> because Matt Matt Boylan said I was an FBI agent. No, I mean, no, no. But do you maybe, do you want me? Would it be a cooler story if I was an FBI? Wait, but why FBI? That's the other thing. It's like FBI. Come on, that's commonplace. CIA, maybe? There you go. CIA? The CIA or NSA or DOD or Naval Intelligence. I and mean, there's lots of other groups. If I was gonna pick one, I'd pick N. I'd pick NSA. We're, we're spitballing here, man. We're spitballing. I know. I we're know. spitballing. Yeah, that's all right. Obviously, I don't think you're an FBI. Agent. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not an FBI agent. Sometimes I wish I was, but no, no, I'd be terrible. You could be James Bond. No, no you again. Could be James no, Bond. no, no. I no, I do not. I'm not even close to being good looking enough for that. I am no. I am no Pierce Brosnan. How's that? How's that? Hey, Pierce is a great looking guy. He is a good looking guy. I wish. I wish he would have gotten the the two J Bond movies. You know, he couldn't get out of his Remington Steel contract back in the day, and they had to give it to. Um, oh crap! What's his face? The fact that I even forgot his name was not good. Anyway. Daniel Oh, uh, who was the James Bond after Roger Moore but before Pierce Brosnan? Uh, I'd have to look. Sean Connery. No, no, no. Sean Connery was the first. That's right. I'll figure it out. Anyway, go ahead. What, Sean what, what, else, what, else, what else did you have? Hang on. Who played James Bond? One sec. Oh, Timothy Dalton. That's who it was. Right. Yeah. Timothy Dalton was in two movies because Pierce Brosnan right. couldn't get out of the contract. Out of the contract. Ironic because it was an American company, right. CBS. They wouldn't let him out. All right, Mark. <laughs> well, hey, let me tell you something, man. It was great interviewing you. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun doing this. Hey, hey. What? Boardpool.com. We're not the biggest company yet. But we will be soon. Flat Earth is our top debate now. Nice. And you're our poster boy, Mark. <laughs> but let me tell you something right now. Yeah. 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 I don't believe it. That's okay. I don't believe That's... it. I need you to convince me. I. You... you know how I'll. You know how I'll convince you. If you had thirty seconds to convince me, how would you do it? Okay. If I was going to convince you in 30 seconds, if you like your life the way it is right now, if you got a good beat on things, 
Don't even look at it. Don't look at flat earth. Don't research it. Don't don't Google it. Don't do anything. Don't look at flat earth. Look at flat earth. There you go. And definitely don't listen to any podcasts as you drift off to sleep tonight that involve flat earth and, and me. I am Mark. <laughs> Are you gonna pass out on me? Because you're like you're like what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. <laughs> At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything right. that could be considered a rational thought. Right. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Yeah. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Nice. What movie was that from? I, for, I keep forgetting that one. Do you remember? It's from uh, Billy Madison, man. Oh, yeah, Billy Madison. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Listen, Mark, that's not how I feel, although it might be. <laughs> but I really do appreciate the interview, man. Yeah. You are great, and I love the content. And if I could shake your hand, I would. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But... You know, listen, <laughs> prove the truth, prove the truth. Got it. I will, I will definitely try every day. Is that it? Have a good night. Buddy. <laughs> All right. I'll see you, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.